Do, do. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Um, <clears throat> Uh, fall is approaching. The presidential candidates continue their shenanigans. Lansing still reeks of garbage and weed and garbage weed. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Stephanie Andre Shannon. And I'm Emily Serja. Thanks for tuning in tonight to WNONO. <laughs> Winono. <-no. laughs> Your favorite local news station, channel 666, 69-420. <laughs> We begin with our lead story, the persistent stench of our fair city. Why does it smell so bad? When will the stench leave us? Will I ever find fulfillment and peace in another person? Our lead investigative reporter, Emily Serja, has the answers. Thanks, Stephanie. I've spent the last year uh, doing some of journalism's most exhaustive research to date. My findings are easily summed up. Lansing smells kind of bad. <laughs> Fascinating. Tell me more. Well, Stephanie, in my research, I found that the source of the stench can be narrowed down to two main sources. First, the general dankness <laughs> stems from the only new businesses in this city being dispensaries. <laughs> While their wordplay and naming is fun, their emissions are foul. And what did you discover about the garbage scent? Well, Stephanie, this is where my research took a surprising turn. I found, and I am breaking this report for the first time tonight, that there is a stink pipeline, a stink line, if you will, between Grand Rapids and Lansing. Yes, the gloved preppies of Grand Rapids have been offloading their stench of metropolitan dining options and bougie art festivals to, <laughs> to our humble city. Oh, that is truly shocking. And that's not all, Stephanie. I discovered that they are also in plans to send us to the smell uh, to send us the smell of their millennial discontentment. <laughs> As if we don't have enough of that. I have alerted the highest levels of state government to assist us in this problem, and I'm optimistic for the results. <sighs> Don't you uh, think that our governor is messing up the Flint crisis as it is? Oh, not him. Jennifer Granholm's mole is on the case. <laughs> Great. We are truly safe then. Uh, thank you for your report, Emily. Uh, let's now turn to Trisha Chamberlain, our station's meteorologist and weather reporter. Uh, Trisha, how's it looking this week? What's up, guys? Uh, Trisha, the weather? Uh, well, I mean, I, I feel Tr comfortable Tr right now, but I, <laughs> theater has AC, you know, so I brought no, a jacket Trisha, we're doing in case. New sketch. Oh, okay. Well, Stephanie, new, uh, weather. Okay. Yeah. Well, this has been a tough week for all of us, but the torrential downpour of blood rain that I summoned is moving from the west slowly to the east area towards my ex-boyfriend's house. <laughs> However, the plague of locusts that I summoned is uh, taking its course from south slowly uh, northern to the Lansing area. So all you folks with uh, weekend plans are going to want to have to cancel those because this is going to be the, the biggest plague that we've seen this epoch. <laughs> Thank you, goddess. Also. Uh, <laughs> Mercury's still in retrograde, so basically, fuck everything. Back to you, Stephanie. All right. Yeah, wow. Uh, thanks. Thank you for your report, Trisha. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah that was rough. Things are not <sighs> going good. <laughs> well, since everything is bad and the end is certainly nigh, I thought we could lighten the mood a little bit with a fluff piece, something sweet and inspiring. Our next story is especially cute. Snuggly and fuzzly wuzzly. Have you guys seen the squirrels? The baby squirrels are already out this season. They're like, oh, breaking! It's just in. Uh, breaking news. Oh, breaking news. <laughs> Comedy Coven is happening live right now in the Robin Theater. And we've got our field correspondent, Trisha Chamberlain, on the scene. Uh, uh, Trisha, can you hear us? Yes, yeah, Steph, loud and clear. <laughs> Well, Stephanie, it appears to be lit AF as far as the eye can see right now. Uh, you guys look like you're having a great time. How are you, sir? Doing great. Excellent. And how are you? I'm well. 
Well, she knows grammar. What? <laughs> what is your name? Lacey. Lacey, uh, what do you feel about this total fucking madness that's going on tonight? It's rocking. Thank you, me too. Uh, hey. <laughs> What's going on? I like your hair. Thank you. How, okay, so how did you find yourself at Comedy Coven tonight? Joe here drove me. Oh, Joe, hey. <laughs> Joe, uh, what's up, man? Not much. I, I did Not much? What the fuck? <laughs> Do you mean the, the fucking greatest night of your life? Is that what you meant? All right, we're just going to cut that subtitles. It'll be fine. Uh, so, Joe, is this live? Uh, okay. Um, Joe, uh, I heard that you drove here tonight. I did indeed. Uh, what kind of car do you drive? A Jeep. Ooh. <laughs> Is it unlocked? No. I'm gonna double check. I'll see you guys later. Uh, Back to you, Stephanie. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you, Trisha, for your on-the-scene oh, reporting. Uh, <laughs> Uh, now back to Emily with our sports coverage. Yes. Sports. 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 Back to you, Stephanie. <laughs> Some incisive reporting, as always, Emily. Uh, and to end our show, I've got a quick update on what our presidential candidates have been up to this week. Uh, last night, Donald Trump Jr. continued his ancestral duty of being a racist idiot <laughs> in a tweet comparing refugees to poison Skittles. The tweet reads, if I had a bowl of Skittles and I told you just three would kill you, would you take a handful? That's our Syrian refugee problem. I didn't, I didn't do the quote unquotes the whole time, but you know. Um, uh, According to my research, studies have shown that the chance of an American being murdered in a terrorist attack caused by a refugee is one in 3.64 billion. So not only is Trump Jr. mathematically incorrect, if someone could hand me a bowl of 3.64 million Skittles, I would appreciate that. Um, also, the crux of his argument is wrong. Uh, the, the crux of his we don't want to die argument uh, is wrong. Uh, I know I am, uh, I am not alone in my very tenuous grasp to this existence. Uh, uh, take me out, please. Uh, uh, on, on Sunday, uh, Gary Johnson goofed hard yet again, saying that no one was hurt in the New York bombings, when in fact 29 people were injured. After his Aleppo blunder, you'd think that this candidate would be diligent in keeping up with current events. According to political analysts, his lack of knowledge is due to him being busy binge-watching Scream Queens on Netflix. Uh, his, uh, his campaign offered this quote, uh, the drama and intrigue of the Chanel's has drawn candidate Johnson in deeply and he will be at full campaign capacity after the premiere on Thursday. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he'll be ready on Thursday. Uh, Hillary, was it the whole time she had pneumonia that uh, she was campaigning? The, just in history, gen yeah, 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 general yeah, yeah, directory. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, yep. Uh, and our final piece of news, at the Emmys on Sunday, Kate McKinnon thanked Hillary Clinton in her acceptance speech, uh, which is why this station suddenly cares about politics. <laughs> uh, thanks again for tuning in tonight to channel 4206666. Uh, six, 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 six. No, yeah. <laughs>